How high can you go? Well, when it comes to the luxury home market in Singapore, it seems the sky's the limit. And the latest new kid on the block is already getting a lot of attention even before the project is officially launched. Now check out this new three-story penthouse at Wallach Residence. The asking price is not one million or even 10 million Singapore dollars, but a cool and very dizzying 100 million Singapore dollars or about 72 million US. Wallach Residence will be unveiled later this year and will be the tallest building in Singapore. At that price tag, the question remains if people will buy. Analysts say it's a test of the luxury home market. Now, the segment has taken the biggest hit from property cooling measures in recent years, with prices falling up to 20 percent from 2013 levels. And here to share more insights on this story, we're joined in the studio tonight by Mr. Ku Suyong, who's CEO of International Property Advisor. Suyong, welcome to the studio. It's good to see you here Hello, today. Hello, good evening. All right, so there's this saying, right? If you build it, they will come. Well, they've built a super penthouse. Uh, the question is, why and what kind of interest, you know, is, is something like this going to attract? I would say why <laughs> because it is the tallest building in Singapore and it is the tallest residential unit in Singapore. So there is something special about it. Plus, at that size, um, I guess we are really considering the markets of the Warren Buffetts and Bill Gates. We are considering the, the royalties around the world as well as maybe some of the ultra-rich hundred billion dollar company owners around the world who, due to the recent tech boom, the fintech boom, perhaps there are people who are looking for such collectible items. So we have to judge this penthouse unit as maybe a Monet artwork. Mm. It is a collectible item. We cannot really benchmark it against the rest of the market. After all, there's only one apartment like that in Singapore. Right, so you mentioned the price there and uh, we did some calculation. It works out to something like $5,000 per square foot, a little bit less perhaps. Yep. Um, prices for luxury property has, uh, have come down from 2013. Do you see this as an indication of perhaps a turnaround in those luxury prices? Uh, this is only an asking price. Um, so to put, thing in, put things in perspective, um, there are 170, uh, 180 apartments in this building. 17 have been sold and they are at the lower floors and they were sold at about 2,009 to 3,200 mm. per square foot. Of course, this one being the top and the highest, is asking for 4,800 per square foot. Right. Now, Singapore has seen those prices before. We first crossed the $4,500 mark in 2007. And subsequently, I think we had a few transactions that crossed the $5,000 and then the $6,000 mark. But of course, for this penthouse, although $4,800 per square foot is a price that we have seen before, the absolute quantum is large. The previous highs that we have seen of 40 over million dollar penthouses, this time around, it is double that value. So this particular unit, I mean, it sounds weird calling it a unit because people are actually <laughs> calling it like a bungalow, a bungalow. in the sky, yeah. right? So it's going to draw a lot of attention, a lot of chatter as well. And I suppose there is some cachet to, uh, you know, the, the developers just based on that alone. But in terms of the, uh, you know, residential market and even higher end residential uh, pr properties, is this kind of going to, are we benefiting here in Singapore because of what's happening elsewhere? Hong Kong prices are soaring, you know, doubling uh, in the past X number of years. In Singapore, only 29%. Uh, are, we, are we gaining something from this? So back to your first point, if you build it, they will come. So a previous news segment today, we were talking about the Saudi Aramco IPO, which may be a hundred billion US dollars. How many oil shakes? would be a few billion dollars richer and then maybe they would just fancy a hundred million sing dollar apartment in Singapore but if you did not build it, if you did not provide such a product nobody even with that means, uh, with that wealth would be able to come to Singapore to own it and then to enjoy it now if they were to really buy it then together with their entourage, their support staff they, the expenses that they would be incurring in Singapore, the lifestyle they would be living it would trickle down to the rest of the economy, the consumer economy.
So I'm positive about this. Now let's talk about the other uh, big piece of property news that's come out today, uh, the announced plans for Golden Shoe Car Park. Uh, it's going to be an integrated development, uh, it's prime location. Are we talking about premium prices for that as well? Okay, I don't think um, the shareholders would be selling out. They would probably be holding on as a long-term investment. I mean, I'm set to see an icon go, yeah. but it is a little bit old and tired looking in that neighborhood. And so some upgrading would be very nice. Mm -hmm. um, again, we are told to expect that this building would be at least as tall as its neighbors at about 170 to 180 meters height. Um, it should come with the latest facilities that the multinationals would need, uh, security features, uninterruptible power, for example. But I'm hoping that we sh also look a little bit further um, with the advent of driverless cars, mm. the car becomes a semi-office. With the advent of co-working space, a change of lifestyle in the work and business environment, I think the design of this office tower would have to consider all these um, different aspects. After all, a bank with a senior vice president and CEO operates very differently than an IT company such as a Google or Facebook. The office requirements are very different. Well, it sounds like there's some uh, scope for some groundbreaking work to be had at this uh, Golden yeah. Shoe Car Park, the future uh, iteration of Golden Shoe Car Park. Uh, Sui Young, thanks very much for coming in and sharing those perspectives with us. We've been speaking with Ku Sui Young, he is CEO of International Property Advisor. And coming up after a short break here on Singapore tonight.